I hope everyone enjoyed dinner. Our thanks to the Serbian Hall for providing yet another great quality meal for us at this function. Thank you very much. And as we begin our awards program for the evening, the committee responsible for tonight's event has asked me to kind of politely solicit your help with making things go as smoothly as possible as all the awards are distributed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have over 40 winners being recognized, and we would like to ask everyone to please respect all of the winners from number one through number 41 by staying seated as much as possible through the program. We want to equally recognize all of our honorees so if the person you came for tonight is an early winner, please hang in there with us until the end to kind of gain a full appreciation of the civic pride in our community. Now I must warn you, if your table causes any commotion during the program, the Volunteer Recognition Committee has hired Chicago Bears defensive tackle Tommy Harris, and he will immediately come to your table and punch the offenders right in the face mask. Now let's begin the program. When the committee asked me to again host the program this year, I really thought about what new angles I could introduce to comment on volunteerism in our community. What could I maybe say or do differently than the past two years to open the program? And then it hit me. What I needed was a gimmick, something to hook the crowd right from the beginning. So I went to the committee and I said, hey, how about a classic folk tale describing both the unwavering dedication and the keen thinking skills possessed by those who volunteer. And they said, yeah, that's great, Ken, go ahead. <laughs> so I told them this story. There's a group of volunteers that working along the riverbank, picking up garbage and beautifying nature, when suddenly they hear the cries of a baby. Shocked, they see an infant floating, drowning in the water. One person immediately dives in to rescue the child. As this is going on, yet another baby comes floating down the river, and then another. People continue to jump in to save the babies. All of a sudden, the group sees that one of their very own has started to walk away from the group still on shore. Accusingly, they shout, where do you think you're going? The response, I'm going upstream to stop whoever's throwing babies into the river. But the committee said, you know, we really don't know about babies and floating in a river. What else you got? And I said, how about a good joke, one to lighten up the event? And they said, OK, let's hear it. So I told them about this teenager who brought home her new boyfriend to meet her parents. And they were completely appalled by his appearance. Leather jacket, motorcycle boots, tattoos, a pierced nose. And later, the parents pulled their daughter aside and said, honey, he doesn't seem very nice. And the daughter replied, mom, if he wasn't so nice, why would he be doing 2,000 hours of community service? <laughs> well, the committee then said, you know, I don't know if that's really what we're looking for. What, do you have anything else? So after a bunch of deliberation, I finally figured it out. What we need is a list, I told them, a really catchy list of top reasons and slogans to volunteer in Lansing. Now, here's just a couple I gave them. Let me know what you think. Volunteerism. Who cares about money? <laughs> yeah, they didn't like that one. How about this? Volunteer, because you'd like your resume to be more than a quarter of a page long. <laughs> yeah, they threw that one out. How about this? Community service. It's not just for hardened criminals on parole anymore. <laughs> I really thought these could go on the banner maybe outside, but they didn't. So I hit them with my personal favorite. This is the one I really wanted, but I got shot down. Volunteer. Your family could really use a break from you. <laughs> to my disbelief, the committee turned away all my new ideas and said, you know, Ken, why don't you just stick with saying how wonderful and dedicated all of tonight's honorees are? So I reflected back on 2009, and one thing came to mind. In my own volunteer work this past year, I commented to many people about this year being the year of the somebody. And by that, I mean I heard many people comment at various functions or games or events about, you know, somebody should really do something about that problem. Or, Somebody needs to step up and do that job. Now, when you ask these people who, they usually respond with, 
Well, I don't know, but somebody's got to do it. Well, the answer, of course, is within each of us. Or as comedian Lily Tomlin once said, I always wondered why somebody didn't do something about that. Then I realized I was somebody. Well, tonight we have a room filled with somebodies. The men and women you'll meet shortly are all people who tackle the problems and take on the jobs that most people simply expect others to handle. Through their countless hours of sacrifice, compassion, dedication, and simple care and respect for other people, these 41 honorees represent what is best about our village. To all the winners, I simply say thank you. Thank you for everything you have done to help our community be a better place to live, and thank you for letting us celebrate with you here this evening. To all of us here tonight, you 41 are somebody special. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the mayor of the village of Lansing for a few remarks about tonight's program. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mayor Norm Abbott. Thank you, Kenny. You never want to follow Kenny Reynolds. Um, and a nice, uh, more sober note, I guess, uh, as I try to be. Um, we thank you all for being here this evening. In this past, past uh, week, we uh, honored the veterans of our country. And tonight, we honor those who we call sort of our heroes of our community, our, our volunteers. Our art committee uh, was organized three years ago. And uh, we decided that uh, we have to do something for the people that give so much to their community. And uh, three years ago when we had uh, our group organized, we had 27 recipients at our first uh, our dinner and we had 197 attended that. Last year we had uh, 37 uh, uh, volunteer uh, recipients with uh, 254 uh, residents and families being here tonight, being uh, there last week, last year, I'm sorry. And this year we have 41 recipients with, as. Uh, Kenny uh, said a while ago, we have 300 in attendance tonight. And uh, with that, we certainly so thank you for coming tonight to honor our 41 uh, volunteers. I also wanted to mention uh, one thing before I leave the podium. Uh, as a mayor, uh, I received recently a letter from the sheriff's office. Every year, the sheriff's office has a, uh, a Cook County Youth uh, Medal of Honor Award. And this year, uh, Two recipients from Lansing uh, received this uh, Medal of Honor Award from uh, the Sheriff's Office. And this comprises of 100 hours of community service, whether it was with, your with a hospital, church, school, senior citizen, or a community organization. And I'd like to, uh, even though they're not here this evening, I'd like to at least mention the two high school uh, uh, students, Amanda Swindle from TF South High School, and Margaret Bandage from Marie, Marion uh, High School. So I, even though they're not here, I would like to give them a round of applause. I might mention that uh, Amanda Swindle, her mother is on the volunteer recognition list tonight. So uh, this sort of starts from the family and trickles down, I guess. So uh, we certainly thank their family for their volunteerism. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Kenny and thank you very much. Okay, it's time to meet our honorees, and to do that legwork, I want to introduce three men who are instrumental in the success of this program. First, our reader for the evening, we are, he is back off the disabled list after last year. He is back and has worked hard to put together the biographies. First, I'd like to introduce our reader, Mr. Roger Wood. And we can't have a presentation without these next two gentlemen. Uh, both of them have been active in the committee, I believe, since the beginning. I know Mike has, and I think Bob for all three years as well. But I want to bring up the two gentlemen who will do the actual presenting, and will pose for photos, and will direct our winners as to how to proceed. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Pekarski and Mike Mano. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 
and welcome to our evening of, of faith. Um, it will be our distinct honor to present the third annual Lansing Volunteer Special Awards Night. Uh, Norm has already stolen my thunder on all the people that are here and all the uh, nominees and uh, attendants, so I guess he, I, I'm just gonna let him get away with that. Um, our committee is certainly happy with the success of the event. It's gotten better each year. That being said, let's get started with our first nominee. Please note that all of our recipients are special volunteers and have made special contributions to our community. So we'll, we will be presenting them in alphabetical order by organization. Our first nomination is by the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 697. And the honoree is Sandra Gangoff. Sandy has served two years as president, first from 1991 to 1993, and again from 2002 to 2004. She is currently serving as a treasurer and has been involved in the ladies' aux auxiliary on a district level. She gives of her time selflessly to help promote our causes, such as the Poppy Days and our annual pancake breakfast. Thank you. Our next nomination is uh, from the Boy Scouts of America, Calumet Council, and the honoree is Maria Cabrera. Maria? Maria's efforts and her hard work in her position as Cub Master have kept Cub Scout Pack 526 thriving and providing viable programs for the unit scouts over the past several years. Without her efforts, the unit would most likely not exist. In addition, she works the Lansing Food Pantry every week, has a full-time job, volunteers for her church, church functions, helps with religious education, and is a mother of two children, Manny and Myra. Maria is one who would be there to help anyone at any time. The next nomination is from Buford Walker Senior Housing. And the honoree is Carol Baldwin. Carol? <laughs> Carol was approached by a Buford Walker staff member to create a quilt to recognize the residents that were residing in the building for, 20, for the 25th year. With her expertise and experience with quilting, Carol became the overseer for the committee in developing the Buford Walker quilt. Carol and a team of six residents sewed, stitched, and created the, the quilt, which commemorated the 25th anniversary of the Buford Walker Senior Housing. She has also spent countless hours shopping for materials for the quilt. Carol assisted the staff in preparing for the 24th anniversary by working diligently on a daily basis, acquiring donations for the event. Carol has truly been an asset to the Buford Walker Senior Housing. Kudos to Carol. <clears throat> the next nomination is by Calvin Coolidge School PTA. And the honoree is Melanie Swindle. <clears throat> Melanie. Every now and then, an organization is blessed to work with a person special who possesses the traits of a leader and contributor. Melody is that kind of person. She has served as PTA president and provided outstanding vision for the organization. Keeping the children her number one priority, she continued with the PTA and did whatever she was asked of her. Assisting with audits, taxes, or the interpretation of bylaws comes as a second nature to her. Melody is credited with the development of the PTA quarterly newsletter. Special people like Melanie are often overlooked because they're always present and available. Tonight, we wish to say we know you are special and say thank you. Our next nomination is from uh, Camp Quality, Illinois, and the honoree is Mary Clinton. Mary goes above and beyond in her dedication to see that Camp Quality Illinois is the best it can be. She's learned to balance her time between a full-time career and her massive responsibilities as director. 
She not only tends to her duties as director, but also makes it a point to get to know each of the campers, their families, and companions. No matter where she is or how busy she may be, she is quick to respond to anyone in need of help. Camp Quality is, a very, is very fortunate to have Mary as its director. <laughs> Our next nomination is from uh, Colombian Ladies of Lansing, and the honoree is Phyllis Druno. <laughs> Phyllis has been an active member of our board for many years and is presently serving as our historian. She's involved with all of our activities. She always handles all of our publicity and news articles. She is our, our queen of our computer world. Thank you, Phyllis. Our next nomination is by the First Reformed Church, honoree Sandra Hammer. Volunteering is a way of life for Sandy. She's helped in both church and community events. She's assisted with the Lansing Youth Center, seniors in need of tax preparation, area soup kitchens, Illinois Christian High School, an emergency bracelet program for seniors. She was very helpful with the Lansing Jubilee event spot, sponsored by the Ministerial Association. Sandy is always helping someone somewhere. We're pleased to honor her as a special volunteer. Next nomination is the First United Methodist Church, and the honoree is Francis Bud Broomhead. Now, Bud, Bud is not with us tonight, so we'll read his, uh, uh, his uh, nomination, and uh, we'll make sure he gets his award uh, tomorrow. Bud is always there, along with his wife, Shirley, whenever you need help. Bud can be called at a moment's notice to help with anything in the church, from stuffing bulletins to fixing something that is broken or stopped working. He is our resident handyman. He's been a church member since 1955 and has volunteered in every aspect of the church. Bud helps with many events such as the flea market, corn roast, church dinners, setting up tables, chairs, tents, serving food, and cleaning up after events. He helps with the Holy Garden, is an usher, and helps with the mailing of the monthly newsletter. Whenever we need something done, we know we can always count on Bud. Our next nomination is by the Friends of the Lansing Public Library, and the honoree is Dorothy Kiefer. <laughs> Dorothy has been a member of Friends of the Lansing Library from its inception in 2004. She is a book sale cashier and has never missed a monthly book sale. She volunteers whenever help is needed for any event. She is quietly always there when she's needed. Our next nomination is from the Golden K Kiwanis, and the honoree is Melvin DeVries. <laughs> Melvin became a member of the club in 2001. He's currently serving as president after having served as chairman of the Spiritual Aims. He enthusiastically participates in most of the club's projects, recruits pros prospective members, faithfully attends the meeting, and is supporting of the committee chairpersons. He is also the retired pastor serving as minister of parish life in the First Reformed Church of South Holland. His goal this year is to add six new members to further enhance the service to the Lansing community. Our next nomination is by the Grace Reformed Church. And the honoree is Joseph Peglia Sr. Now Joe is not gonna be with us tonight. Um, but we'll get his award to him tomorrow. When Joe retired from his work, he found more time to serve others. Joe has served as a board member uh, for many years. He's on, he is the first to show up and the last to leave. He sets up, serves, cleans for the funeral lunches, allowing families to have time together. Joe has helped with the mission trip to Japan and Mexico. Joe deserves to be recognized for all the time he has put in for others 
Thank you, Joe, for all you do. Hey, Roger. Yeah. Hey, Roger, I'm sorry to bother you. I gotta get something off my chest. I, pr I presume it's as important. Yeah, I, I know you're busy and stuff, but yeah. I, I gotta take care of this. We have an event here that we're trying to do. Oh, well, I'll be quick. Okay. I promise, because, you know, for a year I've had something on my conscience. And those yeah. of you who were here last year, if you look at your program, you'll see there's one award that doesn't have a name next to it. It's called the Athena Award, because it's a surprise award that you'll hear about in a moment. So as fate would have it, last year, Roger was under the weather, so I had to take over his part. And I can make a lot of excuses, and I can blame Roger for his lousy note typing and everything else, but the reality is, is that I called the wrong person up. And those of you that were here probably remember, my own wife ran out the back of that door instead of sticking with me. And my good friend Suzanne Long is to my right, right here, was the winner last year of the Athena Award. But I mistakenly introduced June Cole, who was the winner of the award prior to that. So I said to myself, how can I fix this with these two ladies? So I went online, and I actually found some awards that June Cole did win. And I just want to share these with you. June, where are you? Oh, you're hiding. 1939. A famous movie, Gone with the Wind. Everybody remember? A young June Cole is cast alongside Clark Gable <laughs> and Scarlett O'Hara. Now, not many people know that Jane and Clark were dating when the movie was first being filmed. Well, they had a big fight, and Clark used his superstar status to bring in some understudy named Vivian Lee. She got the role of Scarlett, and one year later, Lee won the Academy, Best Actress Academy Award. Well, tonight, we correct this injustice. June, frankly, my dear, I do give a damn. And so I present you with the 1940 Academy Award for Best Actress in a Motion Picture, June Cole for Gone with the Wind. college football season. A young running back from the University of Southern California named O.J. Simpson had an unbelievable season. And at the end of the year, he flew to New York to accept a very major award. Well, I don't know if you've heard, but O.J. had a few problems over the years. So I contacted the NCAA and I asked them to review the case. And I'm proud tonight to announce their ruling. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a woman who quarterbacked Ohio State to an undefeated 11-0 season threw for 2,400 yards, and rushed for 16 touchdowns. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1968 Heisman Trophy winner, June Cole from Ohio State. Summer Olympics in Montreal. A young 14-year-old Romanian gymnast set the world on fire with her seven scores of a perfect 10. You remember Nadia Comaneci? Well, she won the all-around gold medal and she captured the hearts of the entire world. But sadly tonight, I have to inform all of you of a new controversy. According to recent blood test results received by the Volunteer Recognition Committee, it appears that Nadia was so young she had an excessive level of Flintstone vitamins in her system. Therefore, her gold medal is now void and awarded to the runner-up. With a score of 9.95 and a perfect 10 on the balance beam, your new 1976 gold medalist in the all-around competition for the United States of America, June Cole! <laughs> Then there's Suzanne, my good friend. 
who has not held it against me. I took her flowers the next day, I want you all to know that, to her house in the school colors of Memorial <coughs> and apologized because she is a dear friend of mine and I wanted to make it right. So what I have done is I have a blank outstanding service award. It's not engraved. At any point when you feel down and you need someone to present you with an award, I will come to your house and I will read any biography you want to make you feel good about yourself. For the any time she needs a service award, my friend Suzanne Long. Roger, I feel better. Back to you, I have cleansed myself. It's all yours. All right, thank you, Kenny. How about a big hand for Kenny Riddles? I don't know that I've ever been interrupted any better. <laughs> Our uh, next nomination is by the Hospice of uh, uh, Cayman Area, Honoree Dorothy Todaro. Dorothy? Dorothy has volunteered with the hospice for over six years. She's been, she's, she's seen patients in their homes and at the Riley Hospice House where she makes meals and feeds patients. She always bakes cakes for the hospice patients on their birthdays and anniversaries. Although she is always busy, she always finds time to cook at the area soup kitchens. Thank you. Our next nomination is from the Lano Park District, and the honoree is Kayla Neves. Kayla? Okay, apparently Kayla's not with us. Uh, Kayla, a TF South student, participated in the Haunted House Hallway for the past three years. Her first year was a 2006 serving as a guide. She led small groups through the hallway, a job that comes with little fanfare. In 2007, she won a character role as a prison guard. 2008, she performed as Chucky, one of the main characters, and became one of the most memorable characters at the event. She also serves as a student representative to the district and continues to work tirelessly, displaying a high level of talent and dedication in making our events as successful as possible. Thanks to Kayla. <laughs> Next nomination is from the Lansing Business Women's Association, and the honoree is Marilyn Coy. Marilyn presently serves as treasurer and historian for our women's group. She's always ready and willing to help and keeps impeccable records. She's a real asset to our group and can be counted on to give 100% to whatever task she undertakes. Our next award is the nomination by the Lansing Business Women's Association, the Athena Award. The Lansing Business Women's Association is pleased to once again present the annual Athena Award this evening. They also wish to convey a special thanks to their three sponsors, First National Bank, North Shore Holding, and Schultz Insurance for their financial support. The Athena Award is an international program that seeks to inspire others to achieve excellence. The sculpture is, present, is, is presented to a recipient, male or female, who demonstrates excellence in the business, in their business or profession, devotes time and energy to their community in a meaningful way, and generously assists women, <coughs> excuse me, in attaining their full leadership potential. The 2009 Athena Award recipient clearly meets this high standard. She started her career as a teller for the First National Bank of Lansing in 1971, and may be a clue to some people in this room and proceeded up the ranks becoming assistant cashier and auditor and after 33 years of service retired as a vice president in 2004. She's very dedicated to the Bu Buford Walker Senior Housing. She's been on the board of directors for over 10 years and currently holds the post of president. The residents consider her a friend and spiritual advisor who listens and cares. Most importantly to them, because many do not get out, she provides a six week series of Bible studies and other special services twice a year. She played an integral role in the formation of the Lansing Volunteer Recognition Committee and the success of this event this evening. 
She's very involved as a member of the Lansing Business Women's Association, serving as vice president and president-elect. She was instrumental in organizing a tea for prospective new members and encourages members to initiate an annual bing bingo night with gifts for all, sponsored by the LBWA for the Buford Walker Senior Housing. The residents really appreciate this event, have lots of fun, and look forward to next year's event. She's a special individual with a genuine concern for helping others in any way she can. Is loved by everyone she meets and is an asset to our community. It is with great pleasure that I offer you the 2009 Athenia Award recipient, June Cole. Our next nomination is by the Lansing Chamber of Commerce, nominee Judy Arnold. <laughs> Judy has been tirelessly serving the children and families of Lansing by spreading Christmas cheer. Judy has dedicated countless hours to making sure every child has the opportunity to visit and receive a special gift from Santa and Mrs. Claus. She also makes sure the families have an opportunity to truly experience the joys of Christmas. Thanks to Judy, Christmas in Lansing is no less than magical. Our next nomination is by the Lansing Church of Christ, nominee Toshiba Gates. Toshiba is our web administrator and consistently rises above and beyond keeping our information current. She's well liked and respected among all of her peers. What is so amazing about Toshiba is that she is a quick study and learns her awesome skills by reading books and training herself. She is also priceless to other ministries and always assists whenever and wherever she's needed. <laughs> Next nomination is by the Lansing Historical Society. Nominee, Tom Hyland. Tom's contribution to the Lansing Historical Society is that he has supervised the creation of a permanent record of the Historical Society's collection of 50 years of the Journal Newspaper, a now defunct local newspaper. The painstaking work of photographing 68,000 pages and processing every page took two years to complete. This collection is now available computerized for the enjoyment and research of all Lansing residents at the Lansing Historical Society. <laughs> the next nomination is by the Lansing Junior Women's Club. The nominee, Tony Solarski. <laughs> Tony is an energetic and enthusiastic person who dives in and gives 110% when she commits to doing something. As a new member of the Lansing Junior Women's Club three years ago, she got involved with the planning of the club's annual banquet and volunteered for a committee at the district level of the Illinois General Federation of Women's Clubs. She's currently co-president of the Lansing Junior Women's Club and has played an active part in coordinating an uplifting or upcoming fundraiser. She's uh, creative and detail-oriented and the club can always count on her to add her own special touch to things. <laughs> the next nomination is by the uh, Lansing Lions Club, and the nominee, Ed Fulmer.
Lion Ed joined the Lansing Lions Club in 1997. He has chaired various fundraisers such as the Candy Day, Annual Steak Fry, Cadillac Raffle, Annual Golf Outing. He became the club's president in 2002 and again in 2004. Currently holds the post of director since 2006. In 2005, he was recognized by the Lions Club International Foundation as its Melvin Jones Fellows Award recipient. This award is given in recognition of humanitarian work and is the Lions Club highest honor for outstanding service to his community and club. Our Lion motto is, we serve. And as Lion Ed exemplifies this model, he is always there to lend a hand to anyone in need. <laughs> Next nomination is by the Lansing Lions football. And the nominee, Gary Campbell. Gary has coached with the Lansing Lions football program for over 25 years and has devoted countless hours to serve the youth of Lansing. He's not just a coach, he's not just a coach, but is truly a teacher of the game and has helped to shape his student players for their future lives. To dispel the rumor, Gary does not actually sleep with a football playbook. <laughs> he's a great coach and even a, even a greater role model for the youth of Lansing. Nomination by Lansing Meals on Wheels. Nominee is Bob and Judy Butler. <laughs> Bob and Judy work as a team for Meals on Wheels. They purchase all the meals food for a two week period out of six weeks. This involves purchasing the meat, but the vegetables, salads, ingredients, breads, 17 diabetic desserts for up to 70 meals. They also help with the delivery of up to 24 shut-ins every Thursday. They're very caring people and have been faithful workers. They're also both active members in the St. John Lutheran Church and active with their seniors group. Our next nomination is by the Lansing Old Timers Babe Ruth Baseball. The nominee, Frank Benarigo. Benarigo. Frank. That would be Bonarigo, right? Bonarigo. Thank you, Kenny. My pleasure, Parker. Frank has been involved in the Lansing Youth Baseball programs for over 15 years and is the past president of Babe Ruth Baseball. He's also been a coach and handled the duties of equipment director. Frank's dedication and passion to the Babe Ruth program has inspired others to join. He has always given his time freely for the benefit of the youth baseball players in Lansing. Frank is a valued volunteer. <laughs> the next nomination is by Lansing Old Timers Volleyball. Nominee, Terry Pasco. <laughs> Terry has volunteered her time to the Lansing Volleyball Program for the past seven years. She served as its president for the past six years. She's been instrumental in assuring a quality volleyball program for over 600 participants between the ages of nine to 18 years and continues to be available each year for the youth of Lansing. Next nomination is by the Lansing Old Timers, Lansing Little League. Nominee, Jim Riffus. <laughs> Thought you were in the back. Jim has been volunteering with the Lansing Little League for 31 years, a very long time. He's been on the Little League board for 18 years, serving as the minor league director, team manager, safety officer, currently holding the office of vice president. He's been responsible for organizing picture day, fundraisers, bus trips to ball games, and performing field maintenance. 
Jim is a guy who's always there when, he, when, he, when you need him. Thanks, Jim. Our next nomination is by the Lansing Swim Organization. Nominee, Carrie Swarovski. Carrie has been an important member of our LSO family for 13 years. This year will be her 10th year as the meet entry director for the team. She's the reason all of our swimmers get entered into their meets and events throughout our, the entire swim year. Carrie is involved in every aspect of, of our team from registration to fundraising. She has also taken on the role of secretary for the Northwest Indiana Swim Conference which is a conference the LSO swims in. She remains dedicated to our team even though her own children have moved on to high school and college. Thank you, Carrie, for all you do. <laughs> Next nomination is by the Lansing Veterans Memorial Ceremonial Honor Guard. Nominee, Rich Dominiak. Rich established the Honor Guard in 1992 with volunteers to honor and remember our local veterans and Memorial and Veterans Day. He has participated in many community events, including the Good Neighbor Parade for over 18 years, the Lansing Centennial Celebration, 9-11 Remembrance, and the recent dedication of the new Memorial Junior High School. His efforts are certainly appreciated. Next nomination is by the Lansing Youth Center. Nominee, Floyd Farkas III. Floyd. <laughs> Floyd is an important part of our Builders Club. He is always an eager volunteer and talented participant. Floyd is a model of outstanding leadership and has a real sense of passion for serving our community. <laughs> our next nomination is by the Lansing uh, Neighborhood Network. Nominee, Mike Trindle. Mike has been a very helpful volunteer to our organization. He has developed and honed his skills as a cameraman and video editor. His efforts have, tr have truly been appreciated. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> our next nomination is by Luther East High School. Nominee, Art Blum. Art has been an important part of the life of Luther East uh, throughout the school's 31 years of history. As a supportive elementary principal at Zion Lutheran Beecher, as a parent for the past 11 years, as a board member and chairman. He's given faithfully and generously of his time, talent, and treasure to support the school's ministry. Our next nomination is by the Memorial Junior High School. Nominee, Carol Schultz. From her chairing the Memorial Junior High Book Fair last year to her valued leadership as a PTA president this year, Carol has truly made the homeschool partnership a meaningful one. She has been able to provide many opportunities for our students, parents, teachers and administrators at Memorial, and we're very grateful and appreciative of her efforts. <laughs> Our next nomination is by Oak Glen School. Nominee, Sherry Taylor.
Sherry is a very active PTA member and volunteer since 2003. She gives freely and nonstop. No matter what, she's always there. No matter what, she, no matter what, she is always there with a smile on her face and ready to go. She has served as a treasurer and is currently serving the third year as president. She's helped to revamp the annual fun fair and develop creative new fundraiser ideas. She's an active member of the CCLB, which is Kamen City, Lansing, and Burnham. <coughs> Excuse me. A group of area PTAs whose network together to better the individual PTAs. Sherry has been a wonderful source of knowledge and commitment to our school and its children and truly sets the example of 158's motto, putting the children first. Our next nomination is by the Rotary Club of Lansing. Nominee, David Wilkinson. Dave has been a valued member of the Lansing Rotary Club for over 22 years. He served on numerous committees and donated food and merchandise for club events and fundraisers throughout the years. His claim to fame is that he, more than any other member, has been responsible for raising more funds that are used to support the many services to Lansing. The club annually provides college scholarships to graduating seniors from our three high schools, funds to other local charities, recognition awards to students for good citizenship, and recognition of educators of the year. Dave's dedication to the club and the Lansing community as a whole is commendable. <coughs> Our next nomination is from St. Ann Church. Nominee, Chuck Murich. Chuck is a lifetime member of the St. Ann Faith Community, having graduated from the St. Ann's Grade School. He has been our invaluable maintenance guru for years. He keeps a watchful eye on our parish plants, helps organize other volunteers, and keeps the grounds in top condition. He is Father Fred's right-hand handyman, and we thank you for all you do. Our next nomination is by St. Anne's School. Nominee, Jamie McCarthy. Jamie is an outstanding individual who's given countless hours and effort to the St. Anne School. She's done so much with significant determination and commitment. She's contributed with great care and concern for all. Jamie is an amazing volunteer and is deeply appreciated by the school. St. John Lutheran Church, nominee Paul Vance. with our shut-in ministry by recording and producing CDs for shut-ins to enjoy. He is always quick to volunteer whenever he can help. <laughs> our next nomination comes from the St. John Lutheran School. Nominee, Patty Merziak. Patty has served faithfully on St. John's Board of Christian Education for the past nine years as its secretary and chairperson. Patty's had a great rapport with all the families attending St. John's School. She has served as our tuition rebate rewards program, working the concessions and serving as an officer on our parent-teacher league. Thank the Lord for all the talents he has given Patty to share with the St. John community. Our next nomination is from TF, TF South Athletic Booster Club. Nominee, Marlene Romelli. 
Marlene has been an active member of the Booster Club for 14 years, serving as vice president and chairing several fundraising events. Regardless of the activity, event, or function, Marlene's personality and love of life are reflected in everything she touches. She's cooked and served to thousands, organized, designed, wrapped, and decorated for special events while raising four children. Marlene contributed to five, they're all here? <clears throat> Somehow we missed one. Marlene contributed to all facets of the fashion show from models, clothing reservations, centerpieces to raffle donations. Her decorations graced the fashion show, parent nights, and school dances. Marlene never bats an eye or seems the least bit phased by the enormity of a task. Thousands of students have directly benefited from Marlene's generous donation of her time, talents, and enthusiasm. <laughs> Our next nomination comes from TF South PTSA. Nominee, Leah Clancy. Leah not with us? Apparently not. Uh, Leah has always been dedicated to helping the children of our community. She's the first to volunteer and never complains. She has two children in two different schools and is very well known at both for her volunteer involvement for the betterment of the youth of Lansing. Next nomination is by Trinity Lutheran Church. Nominee, Clem Lesner. <laughs> Clem is one of those unsung heroes who helps quietly in the background and does not seek any limelight. He has volunteered for many years working on a church's monthly newsletter, Bread of Life Ministry, our greeters program, the adult choir, and the media team. Clem's dedication and creative talents are commendable. Our next nomination is from Trinity Lutheran School. The nominee is Chris Caldwell. I think Chris is not here this evening, but our principal is. Is he coming up or she coming up? You're going to take it? Okay. Chris has been an integral part of the behind the scenes work on our computer hardware and software. During the past several years, he has volunteered countless hours installing, wiring, connecting to the internet and maintaining the system. Whatever we're faced with computer problems, we know that we can count on Chris to come to the rescue. <laughs> our next nomination, and here's our last, is from W.C. Reva School. Nominee, Colleen Pimental. <laughs> Colleen has been helping the Reva School for the past three years and is currently serving as its PTA president. She has accomplished so much in such a short time with the beneficiaries being the students. Revis is very fortunate to have such a volunteer on its team. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our awards portion of our program. Uh, certainly hope that you've enjoyed it. We certainly have. And uh, I guess I have to turn the mic back over to our MC, <laughs> Mr. Reynolds. Well, I haven't even put your oh. name, but I didn't start a holy war, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just me. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, please, a round of applause for our reader, Roger Wood. And without getting into too much personal business, Roger's been fighting a really bad, uh, actually almost a pneumonia bug, and he has really wanted to be here, and I'm very, very glad that you're back. This is your job. Thank you. And also, a round of applause to the two men pressing the flesh, Mike Mano and Bob Pekarski. I want to please have you give a round of applause to, we know her as Sound Connection, but we also know her as her and her husband, Don and Greg Picard. To close tonight, just a couple of final comments. I always try to end this event with some quotations that I feel kind of summarize the essence of what this event and volunteering in general are really all about. And to all the 2009 honorees, these first two are for you. The first quote, volunteering is the ultimate exercise in democracy. You vote in elections once a year, but when you volunteer, you vote every day about the kind of community you want to live in. And number two, to all of our honorees, please remember, to the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. And my personal favorite, and one for all of you to think about as you exit tonight, don't ever question the value of volunteers. Noah's Ark was built by volunteers. The Titanic was built by professionals. On behalf of the 2009 Volunteer Recognition Committee, again, thank you for attending. We look very forward to seeing you, all of you again, next year at the 2010, our fourth annual awards. Good night, drive safely, and thank you for coming.